This is a prepared audio file with a bass sound playing different bass notes. Let's play it. And as you can see, we have different gain levels for different parts of the audio. Let's go into the file and see it in detail. So I have this first part, it's equally loud with the third and the fifth and the seventh part. And we also have quieter parts down here. And this one, even if you can't hear it, for example, on a smartphone, it actually contains audio information. So there is something playing here. We have a little bit of bass information playing. It's just really quiet. So we have a huge dynamic range between this quiet part and this loud part and this loud part up here as well. All right, so I'm going back into the overview. On this audio track, this is going to be our input audio track, I've placed a compressor. A compressor is used to reduce the difference here, this difference between the loudest and the quieter parts of an audio file. In other words, it affects the dynamic range. Or, differently put, the compression reduces the level of our peaking parts and thereby it opens up more headroom and allows the overall signal level to be turned up. And this will give our signal a higher average level. So what does that mean? So down here I have the compressor and I have a second audio track here. And that one is going to record the output of the first one after the compressor. So we will be able to see how the compression affects the signal. So let me quickly play it again. So as you can see, the output audio looks just the same as the input audio. Up to now, nothing happened. And that's because the compressor did not actually do any work. But this is going to change now as we are changing the values of the first knob. And this is going to be threshold. Threshold sets the input level at which the compression begins. Okay, so now things happened. We see we have a bit less gain in those peak parts. So everything above the threshold, this orange line down here was affected by the compression and everything below was not affected. Let's play it again and see the visual representation down here again. So you see we have these parts of audio above the threshold and these are the ones that are actually being treated. Okay, so before we said compression reduces the level of peaks and this is what happened here. And now the question arises, how does it do that? And this is actually controlled by our second parameter down here, our compression ratio, which is sitting at 2 to 1 at the moment. Our ratio determines how much the input signal exceeding the threshold is being compressed or treated or basically reduced in gain. So how much the input signal exceeding the threshold. So this part here is the input signal exceeding the threshold and our ratio here determines how much it's being reduced. And a ratio of 2 to 1 indicates that a signal exceeding the threshold by 10 decibels will be attenuated or taken down to 5 decibels above the threshold. So 2 to 1 actually says 1 half. We're inputting 
10 decibels and we're outputting only one half of that, so 5 decibels, for example, of the signal that was lying above this threshold. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Let's take a closer look at this ratio knob here and go all the way to the left. The furthest out we can go is one to one. In that case, the compressor isn't doing anything because it just inputs the signal and it will output everything of the signal that was exceeding the threshold. So let's press record and see the visual representation of that. So we had a ratio of 1 to 1 and you see it looks just the same as the input signal. If we take our ratio to the other way around, for example, sitting at 4 to 1, that means if we exceed our threshold by 4 decibels, only 1 decibel of that exceeding signal will be outputted. So our peak levels here will be a lot quieter. So as you can see down here we have the representation of what's going on and we said we have a ratio of 4 to 1 and you can actually see it here because this upper part, this grayed out part is your input signal and the second part with the white line is your output signal. So this is roughly one fourth of the complete gray or darker gray part behind it and the white line is just showing you the output signal. So this is one fourth of this complete signal that was exceeding the orange threshold line. And this difference, the difference between the dark gray and the lighter gray part in the level is called gain reduction. This is basically what the compressor is doing here. It's reducing the gain of this peaking part to this new level here. If we go ahead and turn up the ratio to even higher values, we will end up, for example, at a ratio of 10 to 1 here. Meaning, we only output one-tenth of the exceeding signal. And you can also see it in this representation, it got really close to the orange line already. And it's hardly noticeable anymore. If we go even further, like the furthest out we can go is infinity. Infinity saying... I am not outputting anything above the threshold. I'm just outputting remaining stuff below the threshold. No peaking signal above the threshold is going to be outputted. So what we are expecting is those bits of audio coming even closer to our more quieter ones. And we can actually see that now. So this part here had a big difference in the gain in the beginning and now it's almost as loud as the other one. By the way, if a compressor is working at a ratio of infinity, it acts like a limiter. So in the beginning we said a compressor reduces the level of peaks and opens up more headroom and thereby allows the overall signal level to be turned up. Now, we've done our first part, we reduced the peaks and what we haven't done so far is bringing the overall signal level up. A compressor has this output gain, which is uh, controlling the overall signal in the end. Basically, that just works like a volume knob. We can actually go to our um, audio effects in Ableton or any other DAW and just put in a utility, which is 
just a level controller, you can just set that one up and adjust for the gain reduction that has taken place here. So we can bring it back up to higher levels with this gain knob here now. And you see the dynamic ranges have been reduced and the average gain of the entire sample is now louder compared to this one here. So this utility gain knob behaves in the same way as this output gain here. And I'm taking this one off now just to control if we have the same effect. So putting in roughly 7 decibels here. So this is what our output gain is doing. Now let's compress it a lot harder than we did to achieve one single even out bass sound without any dynamics whatsoever. So I'm going to play around with the threshold and ratios now on this compressor. We see we are not affecting this dynamic range so far, so we have to go down a lot further in our ratio to actually pick up the dynamic range between those parts here. Getting closer, but we need to pick up this one down here. And now we are adjusting for the loss in the overall gain and we are putting the output gain upper, up to higher values. Of course we could um, get this even louder now, but let's take a quick look at what happened here because in the beginning of this part and the beginning of this part we have those little tiny bumps of clipping audio at the moment and we want to adjust for that as well. So what happens here is the compressor is a little bit late at kicking in. So this little peak is not being treated by the compressor. And that's actually due to the fact that our attack knob down here, if we take a look at the info on the left next to it, the attack time sets how long it takes to reach the maximum compression once the signal exceeded the threshold. So it took two milliseconds here to actually kick the compression in and that's when this bump occurred. So what we can do is we go back into attack and take it as low, as short as possible and try to fix this little bump. So um, I'm zooming out a little bit to uh, make this happen. And you see now the little attacky bump here is gone and we have an audio file with almost no dynamic range left. Hi, my name is Francois and together with my friend Tom, I'm running a channel and website called Production Music Live. Sometimes I'm lying, I'm just lying, I'm still lying here with you. Have you ever had trouble finishing your tracks because you got stuck while trying to achieve a great sounding mix? Today we are going to mix this song from start to finish. And if I lose myself, what if I lose myself to you? We will enter the different mixing stages 
we'll go into detail on state-of-the-art mixing techniques and we will learn about the theoretical concepts and secrets to achieving professionally sounding results. So let's get started. And if I lose my 